I've now got the mill into the workshop. The removal men have uh, gone and I'm now able to think about tackling, stripping it down and the first part that I'm going to tackle is the geared head which sits inside this box. Uh, these are the controls that operate the gearing um, and its RPMs are really rather too low. It ranges from 95 to 1420 using um, this in enormously heavy oh, bulky motor which I've just taken off. I won't reuse that and I'll replace it with a treadmill uh, 180 volt DC motor which will enable me then to strip out everything in this box and install all of the DC motor speed controller unit. Um, I also I won't need this and the flap and the um, protector on the front which has got an interlinked um, switch so that you can't start the mill unless you've got this closed. Um, and I won't need the feeds so all of that can come off. So these will come off this will come off. I'll take this plate off because I need to get at the back of it. Um, this will come off. This will come off. And then eventually when I've stripped it right down I need to get to the quill inside here and the spindle. And I'll do away with the gearing that sits inside here um, and simplify it and reduce a whole lot of weight. Because the belt drive motor is very very much um, quieter and will be much more efficient than all the complicated gearing that sits in there which is quite, makes quite a noise when it's running and definitely um, the uh, spindle motor uh, running on um, uh, a belt drive is much much quick, quieter. I've got one on my X2 mill which I converted some time ago uh, in exactly the same way as this only at a smaller scale. Um, and that's proved very successful, runs very quietly, doesn't get hot um, and can run at any speed I want up to 2000 RPM or so. I don't run it much faster than that. Um, so there's quite a bit of work to do on this um, and that's the first job before I even think about doing anything to the uh, uh, axes and uh, putting on the stepper motors and things. But it should all be fairly straightforward, I hope, um, having done one before and having a CNC mill available to make the parts. This is a much more substantial mill than the first one I had and altogether a better and more robust basis for CNC control. Uh, the table is a little shorter than um, the others in the series, the 18 series with um, belt drive already fitted um, and the thing I like about this is that there's quite a long distance here and here for the um, uh, gib strips to uh, affect the dovetails so the gibs run at full length there in this direction um, and across there in that direction and they're solid ones which are adjusted with a screw at the end uh, rather than being screws onto a, a gib strip which is a, not as good a method as doing it as this. Um, so far all I've done here is just cleaned up some of the protective uh, grease that's on the top of it. So now I've got to strip it down and uh, try and get at everything inside here. Um, I probably will take a series of still photographs and show progress as a series of still photographs, but we'll see how we go. The only thing that's been a slightly unusual so far is that this on here has got a hole, and in the hole there's a spring and behind the spring there's a ball and the ball goes into these two 
detents or um, drilled holes to give a, a position of where the where the handle is supposed to be. So when you take it off, you have to be a bit careful that the balls don't jump out and fly all over the workshop um, and all the spring as well. Now I've stripped off all of the electrics that were in here, including the interlock, and um, I've also removed the depth stop, which again affected how this worked on the quill. So the uh, next job is to take all this off the side here, and this, and this, and then I'm virtually at the point where I can start stripping the gears out. So it's going quite well so far, nothing too difficult. Um, just a little bit daunting when you've got a brand new mill that you're stripping down. After a bit of a tussle, I've managed to get the z-axis out of the column. It looks fairly straightforward um, because there's a plate on the top that just simply unscrews. Um, but the screw that fits in there has a right angle bevel gear that you have to access through this hole here. and this is the bevel gears and the thing that you have to do is there's screws that hold these in place on the ends of the shafts and you have to go in through the hole at the back and unscrew them uh, and knock off the large bevel gear first out of the way and then the rest of it is relatively straightforward this is the part that holds the ball screw uh, or rather, should I say, the, the um, worm screw uh, on the, the mill. Um, I shall reuse this piece, perfectly adequately made. Um, and this is the nut for the Acme threaded rod. And it's secured by a bolt that goes through the centre of this piece and you can get at that from outside the mill and this is fairly straightforward to machine so I, I did wonder about even machining this and you reusing it but it's cast iron and uh, the wall thickness would be quite thin and I'd have a struggle to get the screws in so I'll remake it and I'll make it out of uh, 7075 aluminium um, which should be a nice easy job to do, an interesting job. So that's that part of it. And it is possible to lift the top assembly once all the bits have been disconnected and removed it's not too heavy and um, makes it a possible one-man job um, so you can see most of these parts on the table here are going to be surplus um, and this is my new motor um, with it mounted um, ready for 
um, the belt and I, I'm waiting for uh, some special steel to come in uh, so that I can deal with the um, shaft that has to go down to the quill.